The Toronto Blue Jays pull off another comeback win against the Detroit Tigers. They were down 3-1 yesterday in the ninth inning and found a way to win, which is unreal for the Blue Jays. And they didn't waste another Kevin Gosman great start. So we'll break that down and much more in this episode of Jays Digest. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Rionis, alongside host Nick Goss. I want to thank you for all the support that we've gotten so far uh, on, on these videos, on these pregame streams. It's just been unreal, and the Jays have been playing unreal baseball as of late as well. They're 7-1 and one in their last eight games, and yesterday was just adding to that. What a comeback win for the boys. Yeah, and the Raptors were on, so if you guys were watching the Raptors, you missed out on a phenomenal Blue Jays game and a walk-off victory that we will get into in a second. But make sure to hit the subscribe button. We're on the road to 7K. Let's get right into it, and the highlight of this game, and I guess this season so far, is that the team never quits, and Peter, I'll let you touch on this a little bit. We have some clips as well to show you, but man, what a game as a whole, and they never quit. They were down 3-1 to one going into the ninth, and me personally, I, I had faith that they were going to pull it out some way or another, especially with the reliever that Tigers were brought in, but what were your thoughts on the, the comeback, and I guess anyone, you know, the hitters as well? Yeah, I had faith that they would be able to pull it out, and the Jays, they're 7-1 and one in their last eight, but in those eight games, there's probably been a handful of, of comeback wins as well. So you had the 6 nothing deficit against the Angels. You had 3 nothing on the home opener. And then 3-1 yesterday in the ninth inning. I don't care who you're playing. Those are daunting tasks. And to be able to scratch wins and, and find ways to win with, with like those crazy deficits that you're facing... They're big tests for the Blue Jays early on in the season, and you can never count this lineup out. Say what you want about the pitching. Say what you want about the starting rotation. But this lineup gives you a chance to win each and every night, and I can't wait for that Tampa Bay series, man. It's going to be electric. Yeah, it is, and we'll probably the box score now, and a lot of hitters impressed. A couple of guys, you know, obviously didn't, but Springer, obviously he had the walk-off hit, which we'll show you in a second. Bichette did go 0 for 4. Vladdy got back on the board going 2 for 3. Chapman... <laughs> continues to stay hot i'm waiting for a game where he doesn't get a hit and it has yet to happen um dalton versho what a game out of him and a couple other guys impressed as well a bit of a concern is danny jansen there he still is yet to get it going i guess we'll touch on that later but peter what were your who was the most impressive for you uh in yesterday's game uh, for me personally i think i gotta be i don't know kevin kiermeyer continue to impress even when he doesn't get hits he does the little things we'll touch on that in a minute but i don't know who's your most impressive player at a hitter out of today's game it has to be Chapman. I mean, yeah. this guy's just on fire. He's lacing the ball to all fields. He's hitting to right center field more than his entire career, I would think. I mean, that's just yeah, his power does. alley right now. That's his go-to sweet spot, and he looks so comfortable at the plate. Obviously, he's going to slump. He's not going to hit 489 over the course of a season, so don't get on him if he goes 0 for 4 with three strikeouts one game because this guy has been unreal at the plate. And I think he'll keep it going. He's He's been one of the hottest um, hitters to start the season in baseball history. And and that's that's no stretch of the imagination. He's been that good. So I've been very impressed with him. And like you said, Kevin Kiermaier, man, he went 0-3 for 3 with three strikeouts. Then in extra innings and in a crucial time, he drops down a perfect bunt down the third baseline. Doesn't even give him a chance to pull off the wheel play at, short, at third base. So... Great bunt out of him. He just does all the little things and and the perfect role player. That that's what I texted to you. Yeah, absolutely perfect. And I don't know. He just like you said. Obviously, Matt Chapman has been the most impressive so far. But it's good when guys, even when they're not rolling at the dish necessarily, they still do things. Win us the game. And looking here, you can see this is kind of what led to the whole rally. Whit Merrifield starting off with a you know sack fly there. And we played a lot of small ball today. And John Schneider spoke about it after the game how. Team's identity is a bit different this year. We're not always looking for the home runs, and the small ball paid off. The bases were loaded with one out in the bottom of the ninth. Whit Merrifield, of course, a sack fly, and then Alejandro Kirk, sack fly as well to right field. And I don't know. I, this game was a perfect definition of our new identity, at least some of our newfound identity. And seeing the small ball, not everyone swinging for the fences, was, was lovely to see. Yeah, and the boys knew it going into the ninth inning, especially Vladdy leading off. He knew, hey, I can't tie it with one swing of the bat here. I got to get on base and be a leadoff guy. And that's exactly what he did. He ripped a single up the middle. He ran the bases well once he got on. And and then it all started from there. Matt Chapman got on base as well. Uh, Dalton Varsho got hit by a pitch. So the bases were loaded with no outs. 
and it was just a perfect start to the inning. So everyone did their job. Everyone did what they had to do. And then look no further than Whit Merrifield and Alejandro Kirk. These are these are guys that are good hitters that have the ability to hit 300. But what do they do? They give themselves up. They hit sacrifice flies into the power alleys and right center field, and they push home the the tying runs. So they did. Everyone did what they had to do. I was very impressed with the execution down the stretch. I don't want to hear that it's the Tigers that it doesn't matter. They should have won more comfortably. It doesn't matter. Anything could happen in a baseball game. We know that firsthand. So that they can come back from a three-one deficit in the ninth inning, very impressive. Very impressive, and it ended with, of course, the George Springer. Oh, that's the wrong clip. Right here, the George Springer. Walk off up the middle. Um, of course, we had the ghost runner at second. Bunted over, like you just asked, Kevin Kiermaier's great bunt. And then George Springer walked it off to send everyone home happy. The Rogers Center was electric. And like you said, we've won seven of our last eight. But moving away from the hitters now, let's touch on Kevin Gosman. And I think we both agree that at this point, Kevin Gosman is the ace of the staff. And that takes nothing away from Alec Manoa. And we bring this up because we also want to hear what you guys' thoughts are in the comments. It's just that he has been dominant for so long. And... I don't know, at least to start the year, Kevin Gosman definitely looks like the aces. He went eight innings, gave up three runs, five hits, bringing his ERA to a 1.35 with 11 strikeouts. His stuff was absolutely electric tonight, and he didn't look, you know, scared at all. He was attacking the hitters, and of course he gave up three runs, and honestly the two home runs, and Joe Siddle touched on him that he did give up were fairly good pitches. Sometimes it just happens, but what were your thoughts on Gosman's outing? His splitter was probably the best I've ever seen in his Blue Jays career so far, and he was throwing it harder about 87 miles an hour the movement on that thing is just filthy and it's one of the best pitches in baseball if not the best pitch in baseball he's that good and i tweeted early on in the game i said can we just clone kevin gosman five times and obviously that it's not realistic because then you'd have the greatest pitching staff to ever walk the face of the earth but he's just so good man and dating back to last year's playoff game against the seattle mariners you could just see his stuff is a, a level above that of Alec Manoa and and Manoa is great he's a workhorse he will be the ace of this staff for years going forward but I think right now Gosman is in the prime of his career Alec Manoa is still trying to figure out what kind of pitcher he's going to be long term he's great right now but he's still got them, some things to iron out so I'd give the edge to Kevin Gosman as it stands and he's just been so good his stuff is filthy and I feel really confident when he's on the mound for the Blue Jays yeah and um what a contract by Ross Atkins giving him that. It's looking like a steal oh, yeah. now in the, in hindsight. And I don't know. I agree with you. His stuff is absolutely phenomenal. And a good point you made is that Gosman is obviously in his prime now. Manoa is still fairly young into his career, and he has lots of time to grow. But touching on the other relievers there, Tim Mesa, you know, very solid job. One inning, one hit, pretty clean inning, bringing his ERA down to a 2.25. And the unsung hero from the pitching staff, aside from Kevin Gosman, was Jordan Romano, who after his blown save, is going out there yesterday on a couple of days rest and shut him down in the top of the 10th. Of course, with the ghost runner starting at second, he gave up no yeah. runs, which was very important because it allowed Kevin Kiermaier to be able to bunt him over since he only needed one run. So overall, a very, very impressive game by the pitching staff. And shout out to Kevin Gosman again for the uh, unbelievable game and bringing his ERA down to a 1.35. And you love to see that. But let's move now into the final topic, which is defense wins games. And Peter, we have a clip where I'll show you in a second. But do you want to touch on this first? What a defensive game for the Toronto Blue Jays, and it's kind of been the theme for the past couple of games. The defense has started to clean itself up a little bit. Even Bo Bichette is getting in on the action. What were your thoughts on the defense before I show you the uh, the great play that some argue won us the game? Yeah, that's the thing. Obviously, Vladdy's going to get all the praise for that amazing stretch that that he had, and, and we'll see it right here. I mean, look at this. It, it was a good play to, to attack that ball by Bo and throw his offline, and Vladdy just... On his on the day where they're giving out the gold glove bobblehead for the Vladdy gold glove bobblehead, he makes these I'll amazing again. plays. He picked a couple of balls at first base. Yeah, it deserves it deserves to be played once again. I mean, look at that run just, saver. Yeah, just great great play by by Vladdy. Great athleticism displayed. And I want to give a shout out to Bobashed. We've been very critical of him to start the season, and and for good reason. He hasn't been good on the defensive side of the ball. But I thought he looked very comfortable, probably the most comfortable he's been all year at that position so far. He made some sliding plays up the middle. His throws, for the most part, were fairly accurate. And he was he was attacking the ball. He wasn't letting the ball attack him. I, I don't know if that makes sense. But he just looked like he was taking charge and, and he was taking over that game. And obviously, Vladdy for, should get the platinum glove alone just for having to deal with Bo Bichette's 
throws year in, year out. But, I mean, it was a great game all around defensively. Another clean game, and the boys have looked pretty solid ever since coming back home, and hopefully they can keep it going. Yeah, and like you said, shout out to Vladdy again for not only that play, but the double play at first base, almost gunning the runner down at third. There was a lot of little things that the Jays did well, and even the base running by everyone else, Dalton Verse, Show, Danny Jansen, everyone. It was it was a stellar, clean Except game. Except for Vladdy. Except for running Vladdy. was not great by by Vladdy. <laughs> but for the most part, the base running was, was pretty solid. A couple yeah. of mistakes on, on both ends, though. So it was sloppy throughout the middle of the game. But towards the end of the game, it ended up working out very, very well. Because Matt Chapman also had the, the base running error trying to go to third there. But in general, fairly clean game for the Blue Jays. The same could not be said about the Tigers. They had a very sloppy game. But that's what happens. And we're looking forward to tonight's game where Chris Bassett takes the hill. So hopefully they win that one. We'll be there for the pregame show. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.